Well, I, of course, I'm not in favor of making software open. I speak of free software because it's freedom respecting. Sure, sure. And there are other people who are basically the people who like this software, but they don't want to talk about freedom. They coined another term, which is, quote, open source, unquote, which is a way they can promote their views where they don't want to talk about that issue. So it's all a semantical view. fight. Well, yeah, well, 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 thank you for educating me. Uh, explain case, it. Back to the point that you raised. Yes, we can choose by what we do uh, whether to use these m massive uh, corporate, invite everybody to, to put their data into these uh, mega servers, or we can choose otherwise. But we have to organize politically, too. We can't expect individual choice and market mechanisms to always protect our freedom. We have to organize to protect our freedom. We have to do it intentionally. All right, stay there, sir. Amazing information. Can't wait to get into some other topics with you and talk about uh, the organization as well. MySolarBackup.com. A lot of things can cut off your electrical power. Hurricanes, snow, ice storms, uh, global warming gremlins can chew off your electrical wires. Uh, a lot of things can happen. And so instead of sending all your money to Al Gore and carbon taxes, I suggest you take uh, the, your own power needs out of the... Con control of that control freak and go to mysolarbackup.com uh, the degenerate control freak uh, blood sucking parasites of government the new world order don't own the sun yet folks so make your move now mysolarbackup.com the great power source 1800 800 watts of power on demand the solar panel the system the, the uh, charger the batteries all of it great little system get a bunch of these run your whole house mysolarbackup.com 877-327-0365 don't call my name richard stallman's our guest internet icon sir is it better to uh, just have folks go to gnu.org the foundation there or, or uh, what are some other sites folks can visit to read your writings and analysis and breakdowns? GNU.org, GNU.org, is the website about the GNU system and the free software movement. The Free Software Foundation has a website, FSF.org, and there you can find things like resource information, uh, lists of useful free programs, lists of hardware devices that don't require any non-free programs, people who provide support as a business for free software and uh, other useful things. And you can also join the Free Software Foundation, which is the main way that we pay our staff. Now, I'm a volunteer, but the staff get paid. Sure, folks should uh, definitely join that because we probably wouldn't have as much freedom as we have now if it wasn't for you guys. Uh, you know, again, I'm no IT guy. I can barely send an email. Uh, but uh, just because I do lease a lot of servers and CDNs and own some, I... I you know, know some about it, and and always talking to IT people. You know, they talk about how the free software that uh, you're discussing, and then they semantically call it open source to try to you know uh, take away the branding and semantically control it, is a lot harder to break into, a lot harder for people to control. It works a lot better because Microsoft and everybody else they want everything set up so they can backdoor it, they can control it. That also leaves the doors open to other bad guys, doesn't it? Well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but because I won't claim that every non-free program is badly written. You know, those people are not all stupid. Some of them are very capable. It's just that they don't respect your freedom. So uh, it's true, however, quite often they have very bad security even against third parties. For instance, with cell phones, there are viruses that... Uh, can in, get into cell phones. So they can then invoke the cell phone's ability to turn on as a listening device without ringing, without showing any sign that it's making a call. It's still listening to the sound that comes in to the microphone, like whatever conversation you're having with people, and sending that to whoever. But you may be safer if you use a cell phone that's all free software. And there are some. There is the open Moco phone. I don't know how well that's working yet. And I think if you get the professional version of the Google phone, then that's really free software. Although I'm not sure all of it is free software. Amazing. Uh, long segment coming up. This one's short. But another question. 
Um, and, and again, all these IT people and hackers send me this stuff, and it's mainline Pentagon reports and, and Air Force Cyber Command San Antonio, and it's it's the general commanding their forces to attack our own Internet, to test its strengths and weaknesses. And then I've seen hackers have told me, and I've seen some blurbs about how it's really the government hacking the hospitals and hacking power plants to then have a pretext to bring in more of their own control. Are you familiar with government's false flagging or staging attacks on their own systems as a pretext to get more funding and control? Well, uh, I I don't know about any instances of that on the Internet. Uh, that's not what I specialize in. So I haven't read about, I haven't read news about a thing like that that I recall. But it wouldn't surprise me that much. I mean, if you could have the Gulf of Tonkin incident and uh, you could have the supposed... Uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, then I guess uh, why wouldn't they lie about who is, uh, you know, I wouldn't put it past them to uh, stage such an attack and lie about it, but that doesn't mean I, that I know that they're doing so. Sure, uh, yeah, that really wasn't in the news. I mean, there were a few stories. It was. It, it's mainly bizarre, hour-long video briefings with the Air Force and people, and I um, uh, I mean, I'm sure you did hear about the head of cybersecurity a couple months ago quit and said the feds are taking over the web. I won't be part of this. I mean, when their own head of cybersecurity quits, I think we have a big problem here. Yeah, I didn't read about that. And now that I've heard it from you, I'll take a look. Now, there's so much going on. I, I can't keep track of it all either. And it, it was only in a few articles. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk about how do we save the Internet? How do we expand it? How do we make it more free versus the architecture that it seems to be leaning towards? Uh, go ahead and start down those lines, sir. Well, <clears throat> my work will help you make sure that your computer is under your control. But beyond that, there's nothing that each one of us can directly do. So if there's censorship or uh, if there is, say, surveillance going on, uh, in the internet that connects you to me, n neither you nor I can simply make a change to turn that off. The only way I know if we can stop that. Well, stay is there. Through Got the a break. I'm sorry to interrupt. Got a break for the satellite. You're listening to GCN, the world leader in independent talk radio. Okay, let's go back to Richard Stallman, who invented the GNU Linux system. Uh, has a big uh, free software, Internet freedom organization. Again, sir, I'm literally a troglodyte when it comes to all these terms. Again, reintroduce yourself for folks that don't know, and I'm just going to sit back, shut up, and hear what your solutions are, ways to fight this. You got cut off by the break uh, with how do we stop the government, governments, from trashing the web. They openly say the people are kicking their butt. They don't like free speech. I get restricted everywhere by MySpace, YouTube. They admit I'm censored. I'm just little old Alex Jones. Uh, you got the floor, sir. Well, uh, what I started 25 years ago was developing a free software operating system called GNU. And the idea is free software is software that respects your freedom and you control it. The users control it individually if they know how and want to go to the trouble, but also the users collectively control it. Any group of users that want the program to work a certain way, they're free to develop their version which works that way. Those who know how to program do it, and those who have the same preferences use that version, and if they don't like that version, they use some other version. And you can also pay people to make the changes you want. So, for instance, your show, if you wanted to change a free program, well, you personally don't know how, maybe none of your staff knows how, but there are companies that would make those changes, just as there are carpenters you could hire to make changes in your office. And they'll just do the work the way you want it done. And if you want to change it again some other day, you can hire somebody else, because nobody has a monopoly. It's a free market, this business of support for free software. And so does that allow a kind of evolution? It seems like where, where, where the non-free softwares are stagnant, except for minor changes, this accelerates development, doesn't it? Well, it, it may or may not. I won't claim that all non-free programs are stagnant. That depends how much work the, the developer is putting in. But 
regardless of whether it makes fast progress or slow progress, it makes progress in the direction that the developer wants. And if there's something the developer doesn't want you to be able to do, like, for instance, access a certain file more than five times, uh, he'll program it not to let you. So proprietary programs frequently have these malicious features, which we call digital restrictions management, or DRM, or digital handcuffs. They are designed to stop you from doing things. So that program may not be your servant. It may be your prison guard. In any case, these are things that we can take control of ourselves. We can free ourselves and each other, and that's what we've been doing in the free software movement since I started it. But there are other areas where we just can't solve the problem that way.